The second part of the title match is here from Samstown. Thanks to Tom and the staff for hosting us. Great weekend here and a great finish for Dylan. It's his career high finish by far, but he trails in this title match by a considerable margin to Mike Rose. Oh, maybe that will get him started there as he caves in everything to get a strike there in the eighth frame. My goodness. Trails by 40 on the scoreboard, but he's getting 10 against Rose here. So it's a 30 pin overall deficit. Rose with the strike work in the eighth. Doesn't get the Brooklyn to fall and leaves a tricky little double wood. So could have a game changing frame there in eighth with a really fortunate strike from Dylan and a possible miss here from Rose. If you use a lot of hand rotation. This can be a very tough spare. Switches balls. Doesn't carry out the back pin, and that's a major league swing there. The lead shrinks to 29 minus the 10, so it's down to 19, and it's Amico that's going to be working on the strike when he comes up in the ninth. Meanwhile, Eric Hatchett here has himself a, what's that, about a 15 pin lead, and he's got three in a row working, shooting in his seventh frame against current TPC champ Dallas Leong in a battle of Vegas vets. And he is throwing it super pretty right now, too. Throwing reactive for a change. Not his good buddy, that red hammer that he busts out so often. Rose has been begging for shots to go Brooklyn. The last three did, and two out of those three struck, including that one in the ninth. The ninth frame strikes are huge. But Amico with the uh, opportunity of his career right here. Hatchet likes to get 10 lanes of courtesy in these positions. We'll see if he can get a shot off. Looks like he will. Dylan's going to politely wait for him. Well, he, sometimes Eric has a problem getting the ball off of his hand. But it's actually a mature move on his point. If it doesn't feel right, stop. There's no shot clock. Do what you got to do. These are titles on the line. Here's Dylan in the ninth. Got a chance. No! He can't get the Brooklyn to carry. It's been a Brooklyn battle in the handicap. Nervous shots. Hatch it in the eighth. Whew. If you if you walked down to two feet in front of the head pin and put the ball down, you know, there, you couldn't have done it any better than Eric threw it from 60 feet away. Just just perfect. Dylan needs to make this nine pin. He's going to. Yes, good job, Dylan. So he continues to trail by 19. That means that any mark from Rose in the 10th is going to win it regardless of what Dylan does, but Dylan needs to put as much pressure as he possibly can on Rose, who you know, can be wild as well. Dallas has a straight working hand. And those modern bowling balls come from that outside angle at all that speed. Just Those, those pins just don't stand a chance down there. It's, it's, Things where the ball overpowers the pins is about anything that these guys can leave. Solid eights, nines, stuff like that. The entire Amico clan to either side of me is trying to will this ball into the one three pocket. That's a pretty good ball. Oh, will it carry? Oh. I thought something was gonna grab that six pin from behind. Dallas to, yes. I'll tell you folks, that's some really high quality bowling going on over there in the scratch bear. Young still has room for 254. Hatchet going at a 248 pace. Can max for 279. Nice pair from Dylan in the 10th. Barring a catastrophe from Rose, it's not gonna be quite as quite enough, but his previous best finish with us was sixth, so giant step forward for Amico here. And six into the 240s. So a hatchet in the 240s right now, and again, Dallas can only get to 254, so if, if Hatchet goes strike, good count, spare, he'll win. 
If he doesn't strike here, the best he can do, he can still shut out uh, Dallas, actually. 145 for Amico. Rose has to stay behind the foul line to win his second career title. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes you throw them perfect, and sometimes the uh, bowling powers that be let you have one, and that could have been anything from a church to the X that ended up on the scoreboard. My goodness. Still needs a high count fill, a high count mark here to win. You know, we make fun of Eric, but uh, he, he had to pull back again. It's hard bowling for titles sometimes because it gets so quiet in the building. Noise that wouldn't otherwise bother you ends up bothering you. And he pulled back and got a tremendous break. And meanwhile, Mike Rose is over there getting his spare in the 10th, and he's going to win today's title in handicap. Any mark with good count wins the title for Eric. And that'll do it. Those light hits stand zero chance. The high hit is the question mark, and he got that high hit to carry in the ninth, and he's going to win it all. So it's Mike and Eric winning to wrap up the weekend here at Samstown. Great job out of Dylan and Dallas as well. They'll both be back. Nice to see four Vegas bowlers make the top four here. And it's over and Eric still can't pry the ball off his hand. Throw the ball, Eric! <laughs> Why? Sorry? So our two champions this weekend, this guy Eshe and this guy today, are going to shoot 579 for their two title winning games on two not that easy patterns. There's a red hammer appearance. Well, make it 577. Good enough. 277. A lot of respect between those two, deservedly so as well. Dylan 145 plus 45. Mike 73 to 18. How much you want to bet Dallas strikes out? I was going to say. I <laughs> wanted to see the first shot go. So, uh, Eric with a 10 strike, 277, only a miss in the third. Dallas has a chance here to 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, get a 9 strike performance with only spares in the 4th, 5th, and 6th. An awful small margin there between winning and frustration. As Dallas, as good as he's been since his TPC victory, doesn't have a win yet this year, right? I don't think pretty sure he doesn't have a win, and I'm pretty sure he also hasn't missed the top five. So that's kind of the ultimate good news, bad news. By the way, his salad ball matches his salad spare. You'll never see Dallas do that when it counts, missing that seven. Pulling out the awards, and we'll do it all over again next week at the Pickle and at the Evergreen. See you then.